Hello, this is John Livingston, and in this video, I'm going to take you through a basic overview of the FCC's conducted and radiation emissions limits. The FCC sets limits on the conducted and radiated emissions of digital devices. It defines a digital device as an unintentional radiator that generates and uses timing signals or pulses at a rate in excess of 9,000 pulses per second and uses digital techniques. Notice its use of the term unintentional radiator. It goes on to state that intentional radiators, like handheld radios or wireless routers, are not subject to these rules because they are subject to rules covered elsewhere in the regulations. But even then, they consider the onboard circuitry that drives the radio to be an unintentional radiator, and part of the testing process requires turning the radio transmitter off while leaving the device as a whole powered up to measure its unintentional emissions, which being a standard digital device, it is subject to these limits. An example would be a modern smartphone. The intentional broadcast frequency is measured in accordance with another set of rules, but then the radio device is turned off and the phone's emissions are measured as if it were just a standard handheld computer. The FCC recognizes two categories of digital devices, Class A, and Class B. Class A digital devices are those marketed for use in commercial, industrial, or business environments. Class B digital devices are those marketed for use in residential environments. Generally speaking, the emissions limits on Class B devices are more stringent than those for Class A devices. That's because it's thought that interference problems in commercial or industrial environments can be more easily fixed than in a home. Commercial and industrial environments benefit from having more space to work with and not caring so much how fashionable any given piece of equipment is. So effective but ugly solutions like more shielding are easier to install. They also have easier access to knowledgeable people with expertise in correcting interference issues. In a home, devices must look fashionable and are usually positioned close together. Just think about a typical entertainment center that's stocked with televisions, game consoles, modems, routers, receivers, amplifiers, and all these things that form the backbone of modern home theater systems. All of this is crammed together into a very small space. Now let's take a look at the limits that the FCC places on conducted emissions from digital devices. Conducted emissions are a problem because they can propagate through the device's power cord and onto the power network. The wires that make up the power network then become large antennas and the conducted noise can radiate off them and cause interference with other devices. The FCC restricts conducted emissions over the frequency band from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. This used to be 450 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, but I think the push for harmonization with European standards drove them to extend the band down to 150 kilohertz. Conducted emissions are measured on a line impedance stabilization network, or a LISN for short. The LISN serves two purposes. The first is to prevent external noise from the test lab from contaminating the readings of the digital device under test to prevent false readings. The second is to ensure repeatability no matter which test lab the device is measured at. The impedance of a power grid is different and unpredictable at every location, so the LISN provides a constant 50 ohm impedance between phase and green wire or ground and between neutral and green wire. The LISN essentially uses a capacitor network to divert high frequency noise currents off the phase and neutral lines through the 50 ohm resistors. At the 60 hertz power frequency, the capacitors basically look like open circuits, so no power current is diverted through them. The 50 ohm resistance is chosen because the standard input impedance for spectrum analyzers and other EMC measurement devices is 50 ohms. Here is a picture of what a LISN physically looks like. And here is a picture of a couple of LISNs being used in an actual test. Since the LISNs measure high frequency noise currents through a 50 ohm resistor, the FCC conducted emissions limits are given in units of volts. 
The FCC specifies different limits for either a quasi-peak measurement or an average measurement. There's no need to get into the details of what makes them different, so I'll go forward from here, assuming the quasi-peak limits, since that's pretty standard. First, let's look at the Class A limits. From 150 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz, the limit is 79 dB microvolts. And from 500 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, the limit is 73 dB microvolts. Let me digress for just a minute and clear up what I mean by dB microvolts. This information is useful for all of EMC, not just conducted emissions. The unit dB microvolts means dB above 1 microvolt. Because of the wide range of values that can be encountered in EMC design and testing, especially with electric fields, EMC units are expressed as decibels because these dynamic ranges can be compressed to relatively small numbers. To quickly illustrate this point, let me show you an example. Decibels are ratios of different quantities. 1 volt converts to 120 dB microvolts, or 120 dB above 1 microvolt. If we divide 1 volt by 1 microvolt, in the absolute system we would get a ratio of 1 million. Using the base 10 logarithm in the decibel system, that quantity is expressed as you see it on the screen, which shows that 1 volt is equal to 120 dB above 1 microvolt, or 120 dB microvolts. Also worth mentioning is that you can encounter negative quantities. 0.1 microvolt converts to minus 20 dB microvolts, or 20 dB below 1 microvolt. For voltages and currents, the terms are expressed as 20 log, but power is expressed as 10 log. There is a rationale for this, but it's really not important for this discussion, so I'll skip it. I just wanted to mention it here for the sake of completeness. The last thing I want to mention about using the decibel system when working with EMC units is that it simplifies the math required. By converting quantities to decibels, we convert multiplication and division into addition and subtraction. This is helpful when analyzing entire systems because of the juggling required in translating electric field emissions measured as volts per meter into power or voltage levels that are measured at the spectrum analyzer after factoring in things like antenna factors, voltage drop in the form of cable loss, and amplifier gains. So now getting back to our discussion of conducted emissions, we need to move on to the Class B conducted emissions limits. As I already mentioned, Class B limits are more stringent than Class A limits because of the residential versus industrial environment. For Class B devices from 150 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz, the limit decreases with the logarithm of the frequency from 66 dB microvolts to 56 dB microvolts. From 500 kilohertz to 5 megahertz, the limit is 56 dB microvolts. And from 5 megahertz to 30 megahertz, the limit is 60 dB microvolts. The two different emissions envelopes are shown on the screen. The Class A limits are shown in red on the top and the Class B in green on the bottom. You can see how the Class B limit is more restrictive than the Class A limit. Next, we're going to talk about the FCC's radiated emissions limits. Radiated emissions are measured on either an open area test site, or an OATS for short, or a semi-anechoic chamber. The OATS consists of a ground plane and usually a turntable. Much like the LISN, the ground plane provides a controlled, repeatable test environment independent of the reflective properties of the Earth. The antenna is set up either 3 meters or 10 meters away, depending on the equipment class, and the device is rotated and the antenna is raised from 1 meter to 4 meters in order to obtain the highest, worst case emissions. Measurements can also be made inside of a semi-anechoic chamber. The chamber simulates an open area test site. It has a ground plane and usually a turntable, but its walls and ceiling are made of metal and lined with radio frequency absorbing cones. This is to keep outside noise out and prevent reflections that would distort the measurements inside. Here are some photographs. The first is of a product being tested on an oats. The second is of a semi-anechoic chamber. 
Now getting on to the limits, same as with the conducted emissions, there are different limits depending on whether the digital device is classified as Class A or Class B. Also same as before, the limits on radiated emissions for Class B devices are more stringent than those of Class A devices. Radiated emissions limits are specified for frequencies from 30 MHz up to above 1000 MHz or 1 GHz. The FCC divides this range into four different bands and they give their limits in microvolts per meter as opposed to dB microvolts per meter. For convenience, I have converted their limits to decibels. I have also made another conversion to account for differences in measuring distances. For Class A devices, the FCC specifies their limits based on a 10 meter measurement distance between the digital device being tested and the receiving antenna. For Class B devices, the FCC specifies their limits based on a 3 meter measurement distance. It's helpful to scale these limits to make it easy to compare them. The common way is to use the inverse distance method, which assumes the emissions fall off linearly the further away you get from the source. So to convert the Class A limits at 10 meters to the Class B limits at 3 meters, we need to add 10.5 dB to them. This assumption, and therefore the conversion, only holds true in the far field of a radiated emission, which isn't typically the case below about 300 megahertz, but for our purposes here it will be fine. So from 30 megahertz to 88 megahertz, the Class A radiated emission limit is 49.5 dB microvolts per meter. From 88 to 216, the limit is 54. From 216 to 960 megahertz, the limit is 57 dB microvolts per meter. And above 960 megahertz, the limit is 60. Now we'll look at the Class B limits. From 30 megahertz to 88 megahertz, the limit is 40 dB microvolts per meter. From 88 to 216, the limit is 43.5. From 216 to 960, the limit is 46 dB microvolts per meter, and above 960 megahertz, the limit is 54. Similar to the conducted emissions, I've shown them on the graph in front of you for ease of comparison. The Class A limits are shown in red on the top, and the Class B in green on the bottom. You can again see how the Class B limits are more strict. Now let's just quickly review the highlights of this lesson. The FCC controls the limits on both conducted and radiated emissions. It separates digital devices into two classes. Class A devices are those used in commercial and industrial settings. Class B devices are those used in residential settings. Conducted emissions are performed by taking measurements from a LISN, which helps establish a repeatable test setup across different test labs. The Class A conducted emissions limits are less stringent than those of Class B devices. Radiated emissions are performed in either an open area test site or inside of a semi-anechoic chamber. Just like with conducted emissions, Class B limits are more stringent than the Class A limits. And it's here that we've come to the end of the lesson. Please share this if you found it helpful. Thank you.